Hey, have you ever wondered why the x coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a? Say you're, you know, taking a test and you have to figure out for a quadratic equation, you have to find out all the intercepts and the vertex. You're like, hey, this is no problem. You know, you got this formula right here, right? Negative b over 2a, that's the x coordinate of the vertex. So all you got to do is find that and then plug it in, right? But have you ever wondered where that comes from? Why is it negative b over 2a? That's what we're going to explore in this video. So let's get to it. Before we begin, let's make sure we're 100% solid. We have some common understanding that's going to be super important for our exploration. So we're going to talk about the vertex. Vertex is, you know, it's either the highest or lowest point on the parabola. It's the minimum or the maximum. And most importantly for our discussion today, there is a vertical line of symmetry that passes through the vertex. So here the vertex, the coordinate is 1 comma negative 4, and there's a line x equals 1 that passes vertically through the vertex and everything on the left and everything on the right are equal distance. They're mirrors, they're reflections of one another. And so this line of symmetry cuts the parabola in half and it goes vertically right through the vertex. So that is a key piece of information. Let's take a look at why that's happening mathematically, you know, numerically. So let's do a little t-chart right here. Let's plug in a couple values. And so when we plug in two, negative 2, right? You get 4 plus 4 minus 3, which is, of course, 5. And you can see that on the graph right here. If x is negative 2, which is right here, the output is 5, of course, right? Plug in a 1, a negative 1, that is. You get the same exact process going on here, and you get 0, which you can see on the graph. So we can go ahead and continue those for the next two points. So look what we have right here. We're decreasing. Our x um, inputs are increasing while our y outputs are decreasing. And then we get to this point where we get 1, negative 4. And then on the other side, the pattern repeats itself in the other direction. It starts increasing. Do you see? And so on the, on the graph on the left side, right, on the left side, as x is increasing, y is decreasing. It's going from 5 to to 0, to negative 3, to negative 4, but then it starts increasing by the same exact increments. So it's exactly the same. It's a mirror, so it's reflected, but it's exactly the same pattern in the opposite direction from one side of the vertex to the other. Do you see? And so what ends up happening right here is if you have two points on your parabola that are collinear and on a horizontal line like these two right here, 4, 5, and negative 2, 5, what's going to happen is these two points are going to be the exact same distance from that line of symmetry. So the distance between negative 2, 5 and the line of symmetry is the same exact distance as it is from uh, 4, 5 to that line of symmetry. And that's true for any points you pick anywhere on the parabola. And of course, it's the most important for our x-intercepts, right? So here's the deal. That line of symmetry, it is halfway between our two x-intercepts. There's another word for halfway, that's midpoint, do you see? So the line of symmetry, it goes through the midpoint of the distance between our two x-intercepts. So now let's see if we can use that idea to find the vertex without using the formula, right? So let's say we have these two x-intercepts for a quadratic equation right here, negative 4 and 6, right? So we know for sure that the vertex is going to cross right through the middle of that distance. So if we just count, we're going to see we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We have a distance of 10. Halfway to 10 is 5. So if we start on the left, start counting 5, boom, right there. Do you see? Now, you don't have to count every time. In fact, sometimes it'd be really impossible, especially if you have, you know, irrational solutions. It's going to be super hard to count that halfway distance, but we're in luck. There's a formula. The midpoint formula, right? x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So let's go ahead and apply that formula here, see how this works, right? So negative 4 is x1 and 6 is x2. It doesn't really matter which one you say is 1 and 2. You're just going to add and combine like terms, do all that kind of stuff and reduce. And you see, we found out that the midpoint is 1. So we can use that formula anytime we want. So let's see if we can use that formula to find the midpoint of any x-intercepts at all. So here's the information we got, right? The vertex, it passes through the midpoint of x-intercepts, midpoint formula right here. Now, how do you find x-intercepts for any quadratic equation? Don't you use the 
Good old buddy, the quadratic formula, right? Now, here's the thing. This plus or minus right here, that means that there are two solutions, right? We have one we're going to find when we subtract, and the other we're going to find when we add. So we're going to call that x1 and x2, just like we have in our formula over here. So we're going to color code this. We're going to say x1 is blue. We're going to say x2 is green, and that's going to make things a little clearer when we plug these ugly values for x1 and x2 into our formula. So let's do that now. All right, now that might look overwhelming, but... Just stay with me here. Right, watch this. Check this out. Here's what we got. x1 plus x2, that's x1 right here, plus x2 right here, all of it divided by 2. Yeah. Now, this is a fraction, but they already have a common denominator of 2a, do you see? So it's a lot easier to write that as a single fraction, like that. Now, we can combine like terms. You see how we have a negative b plus a negative b right here and here? Well, that makes a negative 2b. And then do you see this negative square root of b squared minus 4ac? That's the same as b square root of b squared minus 4ac over here. One's negative, one's positive. So when you add those together, you get zero. So you're going to have negative 2b over 2a, that fraction divided by 2. Yeah. We can reduce this negative 2 and this 2. And now this is negative b divided by a, and that whole thing divided by 2. Divided by 2 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, and when you put that together, you get negative b over 2a. So this is the midpoint between any two zeros of a quadratic equation. Now, I say zeros here because you might not have x-intercepts. They might be imaginary solutions, but this is still going to be the midpoint. So that's pretty handy. Now, let's go ahead and see, let's see an application of this, right? Let's talk about our good old friend x squared minus 2x minus 24. If we use the formula, negative b over 2a, we plug everything in. We can reduce uh, negative of negative 2 is positive 2. Divided by 2 is 1, right? No problems. And so here's one x-intercept. So we just plug in our values for a, b, and c, right? We get square root of 100, which is 10. 2 minus 10 divided by 2, well, that's famously known as negative 4. Whereas the other, where we add, plug in all our numbers, we get the square root of 100 again, which is 10. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And, as we had just seen, the midpoint of negative 4 and 6 is 1. So that is why negative b over 2a is the x-coordinate of the vertex, because that is halfway between the two x-intercepts for any, any quadratic equation you could possibly think of. So I hope this has been interesting, maybe enlightening. I did it just for fun. It was entertaining for me. I got the idea from a friend of mine. It was really fun to put together and collaborate with him on it. And, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it too. So listen, if you found this interesting, you could find more videos and all kinds of other math stuff on my website, thebeardedmathman.com. I'll put a link in the description below for you. You can check that out. And until next time, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later.